Judging by the amount of FOV police comments on the internet, one can only surmise that the most important unanswered question in sim racing is whether high field of view is better than low field of view and whether or not a higher field of view is faster than a lower field of view. So in this video, I'm going to be answering this question with the help of a Formula 1 car at possibly one of the best circuits in the world. That's right, Brands Hatch located in the centre of the Isle of Man. What I'm going to be doing is doing a lap with the lowest possible field of view followed by a lap with the highest possible field of view and with the lap times in hand we will finally know once and for all which field of view is objectively the best field of view. If you enjoy our content and want to support the channel, make sure to use the Gamer Muscle Fanatec affiliate link located under the video when buying Fancy Pants Sim Racing equipment from the Fanatec store. Now in order to do this properly, we are of course going to be using the super mega massive muscle sim rig with the three 55 inch OLED displays. Unfortunately, due to my lens on the camera that's capturing the image here, the two side screens are cropped off a bit, but the centre screen is fully visible and uh, it will have to do, I'm afraid, it will have to do. Now we're going to start by having the field of view on the highest possible field of view. Uh, controversially, some people might start this test with the lowest possible. So let's increase that field of view using the triple screen options inside of Assetto Corsa. And we are getting pretty, pretty high in the field of view here. Nice visibility for the side of the car. And uh, there we go. I think we are pretty much at the limits of field of view there and any more and we start uh, distorting and destroying the virtual reality uh, in fact there goes the front of the car deep into the space-time continuum in order to keep this correct and purely scientific we're gonna make sure that we actually have workable visual information on the screen to drive from um, to not to, to, to go beyond that would just be absurd so there we go we've got the cockpit on the highest the highest field of view that's workable and we're going to turn a lap now and we're going to see what kind of pace we can get so let's get around brands hatch here as i say one of the best tracks if not the best track well probably the second best track on the isle of man after the full tt track and of course brands hatch is located in the center of the Isle of Man TT track. Now look at this absolute fantastic perception of speed from this field of view, which is great. And the sun appearing to set as we go over the hill, uh, really nice. Absolutely beautiful. Now we can see that the, the wheels somewhat in the distance, um, Again, yeah, I mean, g g g g wheels giving us a sense of what's about to arrive at our head a few seconds later. So that's nice. The trees going past the the bridge there, absolutely flying past us. Beautiful stuff. Um, if a car was to try and make a move up the inside, we'd be able to see it. So that's a a great advantage there of using this high field of view well, what I'm gonna do is turn a few laps I've got to get the force feedback correct otherwise this test is not gonna work so we're gonna we're just gonna do a couple of laps here in this field of view to make it fair let's give ourselves three laps otherwise you know it's not it's not gonna be a fair comparison three laps in this and three laps in the low field of view. Now I will be honest, with the field of view this high, it is making it a little bit tricky on uh, placing the front the front wheels um, on the track. But 
with a little bit of adjustment, I think we are getting there and we're dialing ourselves in. I will also say it is making it hard to see the front of the formula car and where the wheel would be. Um, I turned the in-game wheel off for, for raw immersion. Uh, an advantage of running this higher field of view though is that the aerial is a lot smaller and uh, far less obnoxious. So if you're driving a formula car that has a large aerial on its nose, this could be a valid method for reducing uh, how much that aerial obstructs your view. Right, I think we're set here now to do the actual proper lap. Those were the two warm-up laps. And let's go. Let's nail the line into the corner here, nice and smooth. Power out of that. Running wide as possible. Now we've got a break into T1. I've gone a little bit wide, but that's okay. Up towards the Illidru. We just want to break just before the bridge. Good bit of infield track there to uh, spectate if you're ever at Brands Hatch on the Isle of Man, as I say. On the throttle, run a little bit wide there. And oh, we've run too wide. Unfortunately, we've just had a lap cut, and that's going to invalidate the lap time. So we're going to have to do another lap here. My 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 mistake, my fault. Sorry, guys. I don't think that's going to affect the uh, data so much. Absolutely spectacular going through the tunnel there. That really does add to the sensation of speed and excitement of driving a formula car having the tunnel literally warp over the top of you oh and oh no see what i've done oh if i've caught it though what i did there is i put a wheel on the grass which is surprising really because most of the screen is actually grass so i should have not done that i've only got myself to blame right here we go for the actual lap that matters those those were just warm-up laps here we go concentrate don't lock up go focus on those front tires i am tempted i think to really get the most out of this beautiful high field of view setting it's probably it could be good to wear binoculars so a disadvantage though you do get a fantastic sense of speed um the it does test your eyesight um, and visual acuity of being able to see the front of the car. Indeed, even where the wheel is attached to the car, is, it is quite a distance. Though, 55 inch OLEDs are 4K, are giving me good clarity. So, maybe this is a more recommended setup for those of you using larger screens. But if you're on a small monitor, ironically, going all in on field of view might actually be detrimental. Bit wide there, almost the same mistake. Dingle Dells, beautiful corner to nail. Here we go, final corner. I'm excited to see what lap time we've got. And even more excited to find out whether or not the lowest possible field of view is more competitive. So let's go across start finish line. What did we get? A 1 minute 15.129. And now we need to go to the distance spinner. This is what I'm using to adjust the field of view here. And we're going to go for the lowest possible field of view. And I'm really genuinely interested to see which is more competitive. I also don't know to what extent we can lower the field of view in Assetto Corsa before again we break the space-time continuum. We're getting in there though, look at that, look at that beautiful bolt on the uh, dash there. So lower field of view already, I'm not driving here, but already is allowing me to really appreciate the texture of the car dash and also the, the reflections off the bonnet. So you again, we're seeing advantages with both the high and low field of view we can we can get lower than that we do have more options available to us to further lower the field of view 
And now we can really appreciate the actual polygon mesh of the car. So those of you that are aspiring 3D artists, uh, this could be the optimal way to play a racing simulator. I'm going to have to tilt the car. The Oh, so now we can't actually see the bonnet. Now I've tilted it up to zero degrees. I can't actually see any of the car. We can further decrease the field of view. Okay, that's too far. I, I, I would, I mean, there is space to decrease it a little bit more, but this is the problem with the aerial. This is what I mentioned with the large field of view, um, is that the aerial is, you can look past it with a high field of view, but with the low field of view, the aerial is very difficult to, to avoid. But so I think that, I think that's fair enough to say that is the lowest we can go before the aerial on the car uh, will obscure our view. Maybe, I mean, we, this is going to be unrealistic. But I, I'm, I could move the camera up. No, you see, that's not, that's not helping. I mean, that's cheating, isn't it? We can't move the camera above the aerial. I'm going to have to keep it in the same position, guys. Otherwise, it's not going to be scientific or fair. So we'll do with that. We'll, we'll, we can reduce the field of view a bit more. But I think that's pretty safe to say that's the lowest field of view that's, that's workable. Um, anything lower would be unscientific and just absurd. So let's get driving here. Uh, the lap time that we have to beat, 115.129. And in some senses, you could say this second part of the test um, has the advantage that we've already done the first part of the test. We've had a chance to drive uh, a few laps of Brands Hatch located in the centre of the Isle of Man. So let's, uh, let's go here. Okay. Okay, that... So what you what you do notice um, what you do notice with this is that you can definitely detect uh, input a lot more. Um, now I have a problem. Okay, okay, right. So you can definitely detect steering input more. So. From a perspective of sensitivity and being aware of what you're doing with your steering wheel, um, a lower field of view does help you to um, better be aware of what you're doing with your input and potentially allow for more precision. Ha however, uh, we are having a problem of uh, there is a lack of speed perception and uh, also difficulties of visibility uh, in that my screen is now entirely gravel and I have no idea where the car is. Um, yes, this is slightly problem. Okay, now our head has uh, vanished into the vehicle. So we are having some issues here with the lock to horizon setting which I put on for, for comfort. I don't believe we've actually made it to the first corner yet. Oh, there's the racetrack. Oh, no. Yeah, there we go. There's the racetrack. And we're back on the tarmac. So, unfortunately, though the lower field of view has magnified input and would potentially lead to smoother input of driving uh, and has allowed us to admire that, uh, that bump map on those brick textures for the Brands Hatch pit lane, this lower of a field of view, I would describe as undrivable. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to compromise here. We are going to increase the field of view. So you, I, I hate to say it, but this this kind of does invalidate some of the science that we're performing here. But I'm I'm having to, I'm having to compromise. Um, it's just the it's just the reality of it, guys. I, I, I'm sorry you can leave your complaints in the comment section right okay so i've turned locked horizon off we've got the field of view to as low as possible before we literally can't see anything and uh we're, i'm ready to go here we go the test begins for low field of view so already as I say, it does magnify the input that you're putting in on your steering wheel. So you can be much more aware of how what you're doing on the wheel and how that's affecting the car's movement. And when the car is 
going over bumps um, and that's moving the car left and right the, the the rotational of the car obviously we've got a lot to horizon on here so you're seeing the bumps up and down but that rotational movement of the car um, is better reflected so you can with the lower field of view you can definitely experience the game's physics more clearly though the lack of visibility oh, we can appreciate the track marshals that's fantastic the lack of visibility I would describe as problematic um, even even with us using this uh, triple 55 inch setup with the field of view set to the lowest setting it is proving to be somewhat somewhat counterintuitive okay right I will be honest as well this is making me slightly motion sick so again a lower field of view might or the lowest field of view might not be optimal for those of you that are prone to motion sickness But we can't draw any conclusions just yet because we haven't got the lap times. So that was one out lap. Do you know, what? I really like being able to see this far into the distance. I think if you if you were a sort of budding ornithologist, or maybe a astrophysicist, this low field of view might be more what you're used to, and could potentially feel more natural and intuitive. It does allow you to look into the corner. Oh, it's very hard to do that corner. It's, it's, I believe that was Sir Tree's corner. It does allow you to look into the... Thank you for following our Twitch channel there, whoever that was. It does allow you to look into the, the corners and really appreciate the curbing. The sense of speed is somewhat diminished. Oh, oh! I'm, 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 I'm oh, we've got, we've gone wide again. I, I'll be, I am struggling to balance the car at the limit here. I'm trying, my, I'm trying my best, but there's a limit to my, to my skill level. Right, that was the two out laps. It's now time to put in the lap that counts, the decider, and then no one will be able to argue with the data. And we will know finally, once and for all, whether or not a low field of view is better than a high field of view. And to be honest, I'm surprised more... Oh, oh, through Druids. Yes, held it. I'm surprised more YouTubers, or that this hasn't been done before. Um, to me, this would seem like the most logical way to subdue the anger and uh, the anger the confusion oh bollocks I've gone off the track um, of of the FOV please we're gonna have to do another lap guys I'm sorry I'm <laughs> I really feel like I'm letting you guys down here the data the data is gonna be a little bit I mean really really we need a we probably need like a, a good hundred or so people to go through this test and uh, you know for this I'm, I'm really disappointed in myself here. I wanted this to be legitimate. I don't think this, this is going to go through peer review. I mean, the numbers will speak for themselves, though. At the end of the day, viewers at home can try this themselves. And there's lots of people with three 55-inch OLED screens that could do this. So here we go. Right. Let's do it. Yes. Look at that. I, I, and you know what? I can't see the dash of the car, but the field of view is allowing me to see the individual polygons of the road surface. So, a set of course that does use laser scan tracks, and this is really allowing me to appreciate that track detail and also be very, if not hyper aware, of track bumps 
and the, the road texture itself uh, and the texture work that Kunos put into this circuit. Um, absolutely fantastic stuff. So again, if you're a, a budding 3D modeler, this, this could be very useful. Now, I, I am using a shader patch here with its custom trees, so that's why some of the trees look like they're from the haunted house at your local theme park. Don't worry about that. But this field of view is actually allowing us to really enjoy the trees and the grass on the circuit. A lot more noticeable, the individual blades of grass in this field of view than they were from the... Uh... Oh, no. Oh, God. Gone wide again, guys. Yes, it's nicer to be able to see the grass and the trees. Right, we're gonna do. We're gonna have to do one more here. We're doing this. Come on, concentrate. I'm overdriving it. It's it's easy to do. If I'm honest, I think I will say this is less immediately intuitive than driving with the wide field of view the lack of visibility is making things unduly difficult but we're getting most of the track here we are getting there it's just that I think it's the uh, the right hander is catching us out it looks sharper than it probably is in reality right here we go Sir trees oh look at that we're on the power this is a stonker guys let's not make the same mistake I know we have technically had another two laps practice but I have to get the lap I have to get the data for the lap time yes Here it is. This is the one that's been catching us out. I think it's, it is Dingle Dell. There we go. We got it that time. Absolutely fantastic. Really smoothly done. Get in there. Up through the gears. Final corner. Just flow it through. Let the car run wide. Get on the power. That's it. What time have we generated? A 131.5. So there you have it. It's indisputable. We've got the data. Uh, we've got the evidence. And uh, the console players were right all along. The highest field of view is better than the lowest field of view. And from the data that I've gathered, the higher the field of view, the faster you will go. 131 lowest field of view. 115 highest field of view. 15 seconds of time difference and we had more laps at the lowest field of view so if anything you'd expect better results at a lower field of view so uh that's it fov police can uh, calm down no comments need to be made on the internet i've done the science we've given you the answers the world is now a better place make sure you click that like button make sure you subscribe make sure you have a cup of tea and enjoy it but until the next one thank you for watching and goodbye everyone